Psalm 34. Say it with me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. There is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack, suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life, and loveth many days, that he may seek good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them to do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Let's ask God's blessing now. Father, we thank you, Lord, for again this privilege, Lord, we have to gather around your word. Just pray God you'll bless the message, Father. Lord, I'm nothing. Lord, I need you. Help me, God, today. Uh, pray that everything that's said not will be all to your honor and to your glory. Rachel, you'll have your way in our hearts now. We'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I love how David starts us off uh, with a declaration. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes, Do you have that kind of ter determination? <clears throat> we must be determined Amen. to bless God at all times. No matter what. God will see that and He'll bless our faith in Him. Right? That's living by faith. That's just trusting God. And when you do that, you'll find that there'll be some, some light that'll poke through those clouds. You ever seen that? We've seen some rays poking through the clouds. That's what will happen. And before you know it, the clouds will clear again. Amen. Amen. Let's be determined like David. I will bless the Lord at all times. No one can do that for you. You know, when you come to church, it's not a pep rally, really. I'm not here as a, a motivator for you for the rest of the week. That's not really my job. I do want to be an encouragement, but I can't sustain you. I, you don't look to me, you look to Christ. Amen. All I'm doing today is I'm a pointer. Not a motivator, I'm a pointer. <laughs> I, I point you to continue to look to Him. Continue to look to Him. He's your motivator. Amen. Okay? Not me. Like I said earlier, I'll let you down. From time to time, I'm going to let you down. I'm just a man. I'm flesh same as you are. But the message, and we obey the message from the Lord. It would be determined to bless the Lord at all times. David says, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm not going to let it depart from my mouth. Well, that'll save from a lot of trouble, won't it? Isn't true? If you're always praising God, or always being thankful to God and lifting Him up, then you can't really be down the mouth. You can't really, you know, be down the dumps, can you? Because the positive and negative don't mix. You know, it's like oil and water. They can't miss. That's what God wants to happen. He wants His blessings to flow through us. Right? Continually, all the time, living in a state of rejoicing. You see, but things aren't going good. Yes, but there's so much to be thankful for. Amen. Right? Now, I'm not preaching positive thinking this morning. <laughs> but... 
should be positive about the Lord, though. Right. Think on Him. Right. And when you think of God, that's very positive. I mean, no matter what happens, I know I'm saved. Yeah. I know I'm secure in Him. I know I'm going to be with Him forever. God's still good. Think of all the blessings yeah. of God still that we have and enjoy. And, you know, what a blessing to have this old King James Bible oh, before me this morning. Treasure. Yeah. Treasure. That's right. Yes. Have the pure words of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And a measure of health, or, you know, to be able to be here today, enjoy the sunshine, be able to see it, and to be around you all, God's people, praising God together. What's that worth? I think you could put a worth on it, or an amount, or a dollar. All these wonderful blessings. Amen. God daily loadeth us with benefits. Amen. Amen. We read that this past week. Yes, let's be determined like David. That I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm not going to let myself get sour. I'm not going to let anything, by the grace of God, let me get down in the dumps. I'm going to keep my eyes on the Lord. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And when you do that, the humble shall hear the rather be glad. God's people, they like to hear you brag on Jesus. Yes. They get excited about that. Yeah. Too often we think too highly of ourselves and then we lift ourselves up. No, let's boast in Him. Yeah. Let's brag on Jesus. Yeah. Let's get ourselves put us way back on the list. Let's, let's put him first. Think about him first. Amen. Lift him up. You can never lift him up enough. Oh, it blesses my heart when people brag on the Lord. I like it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. What a blessing. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Seek the Lord. Seek after Him. Keep seeking Him. Okay? As we seek Him, we get closer to Him. He draws us nearer to Him. And we'll find Him delivering us from all our fears. There's a lot of fears in life, isn't there? A lot of things we face. Very fearful at times. Well, we have the unknown, the, the future. We don't know what's going to happen in the next five minutes. We don't know. But the Lord can deliver us from all our fears. Every single one of them. We shouldn't be living. Definitely not the people of God. I can understand the lost, but not the people of God. Not us. Never. You know, people are fearful. Even some of God's people can be caught up in, you know, the, the end times and what's going to happen to us, you know. And, but it's start storing up food and water, you know, and build a bunker and I don't know. You know, people really they get caught these things. The people of God. Starting to worry. Starting to fear. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, if things start getting tough and bad, what are you going to go to the Amazon? You're going to live in a, a tree house in the jungles? Eat what monkeys eat? What, what are you going to do? You're going to take yourself completely off the system. Give up your driver's license, your passport, your citizenship. You're going to do that? I mean, does not God want us to, to stay here? Does he not want us to... I'm not saying there might be some people there that God wants you to reach. If he calls you to the mission field, he wants you to reach those people in the jungles. So they, they need Christ. I'm not saying that could be part of God's will for you, but I would say probably for most of us, God wants to stay where we are and be a witness and a testimony in these last days. You know? Stand for him. Do what we can. Right? So, Pastor, there might be persecution coming. So be it. There are people in the world today going through persecution in China and Iran and in Muslim countries and they're standing for Christ. And, you know, their, their families excommunicate them. Sometimes they're killed or put in prison. Uh, this is going on today in our time. You think of all the persecutions that have gone on in the church age and time past and the dark ages and all they went through and Roman persecution before that. Who are we to think we're any better or somehow 
we won't go through persecution or, or we're not better. We're the same. It's possible. Let's just face it. Okay? Like our Chinese brethren. Just just man up. Come on, man up. If we have to go underground and meet out in the woods and have church, we'll do it. Yes, sir. We'll make do. Right? We'll be alright. We're just going to heaven. We're just going to live with God for all eternity. Don't get too excited, okay? We're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We're on the winning side. We read the end of the book. We win. Yay! Jesus comes back. Reigns and rules upon earth. and We get to reign with him. And don't matter. Really. Don't, don't worry. Don't fear. Don't fret. Don't give in to that thing. The Lord, he delivers us from all our fears. Verse 5, they looked unto him and were lightened. Yes, keep your eyes on him. He'll lighten you. The sunlight, the S-O-N, light. And he'll lighten you. He'll lighten your countenance. He'll, he'll brighten everything up. He'll brighten you up. <laughs> That's what he wants to do. That's a good wonder. Why are you so happy? Why are you so enjoy being a Christian? Why? You know? Yes. Notice, and their faces, not ashamed. God gives some boldness, right? He wants to give that to you. He wants you to live in that every day. He wants to increase your boldness. Satan hates it. Oh, he hates it. Oh, he hates it when you're enjoying being saved. And you have that boldness to stand for him and say a word at just the right moments when God gives it to you. The Spirit of God says, you say this, and you say it. People are standing there. Like they were with Christ, right? They, they marveled. Or, right? Just could believe. Wow, what authority he had, right? From God. People sense that in you. When he lightens you. When your face is not ashamed. Verse 6. Number 1. God saves. <laughs> he saved me. Praise God. This poor man cried. That was me. That was you. We cried out to God. We were in need. We were needy. Yes. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. So many troubles God saved me from. And he continues to. Thank God for his wonderful salvation. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. Think about the angels and how they look after us and protect us. All that they do. If it wasn't for them, you know, would Satan kill us? God's kids would he wipe us out. Satan has power. Thank God there's the angels, amen, round about us. God protects us, watches over us. Oh, taste and see, verse 8, that the Lord is good. Isn't he good? Amen. He never gets old. Amen. <laughs> Some things you eat and you're like, well, I don't know if I want to eat that again. You gotta wait a while, right, before you have that meal again or something because it's just like not one of your favorites. Like my wife, she makes this uh, cabbage stew, you know, thing. I mean, it's okay. You know, it's got sauerkraut in it and sausage. And, I don't know, it's okay. If you're Polish, you probably like it every day. Every day. But I'm not Polish. <laughs> I like cheeseburgers and fries and things like that. Um, but the Lord, He never gets old. I love I love tasting Him every day. I opened my Bible this morning, go on the back porch there on the, on the deck, and I said, Lord, would you give me something today? Give me something fresh from you today. And He does it every time. And He blesses our soul. He's fresh as a daisy every day. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in Him, that desires Him, that thirsts after Him, and hungers after righteousness. Blessed is that man. That man will be blessed. Oh, fear the Lord. Verse 9. Number 2. Not only does He save us, He contents us. Makes us content. 
Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. You can have very little and be happy in Jesus. Amen. Very little. I know I've told you this story probably before. We knew this lady in my dad's church years ago. Her name was Mrs. Smith. And I remember Mrs. Smith, she got a little annoyed one time where um, they played an old tape. You know, they used to have cassette tapes back when I was young. Back in the dark ages, back when the dinosaurs were on the earth. And they made a recording of me, mom and dad, when I was when I was young, I was preaching. I used to preach when I was young. You know, I've been preaching a long time. And uh, I was screaming and hollering. Right. And I remember Mrs. Smith, when, when, when they played that, she said, oh, that's awful, that's awful. She said, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she was a precious lady in my dad's church. And, uh, yeah. She didn't have hardly anything. Yeah. I think she had one spoon, yeah. one fork, one plate, one chair, a little table in her little apartment. Just had so little. Right? But she's just content as she can be. Happy in the Lord. Yeah. She was a blessing. But she didn't like my preaching as a kid. <laughs> I hollered too much. <laughs> There's no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You just concentrate, focus on Him. Right. Right. And not fleshly desires, or fleshly things. And say that God doesn't bless us in physical things, and He does. But may our heart not be set upon those things. Our heart should be set upon Him. Because he's the only thing that will contend you. That's right. Because the more you get or gain in this life of the, of the flesh and of the world, the more you're going to want. The eyes of man are never satisfied. Right. Yep. The more you have, the more you want. It's just, it's just the way it goes. You can never satisfy this flesh. It always just wants more, more, more. But in Christ, in seeking him, all with contentment. Will not want any good thing. He supplies. Amen. He looks after us. You got food, Raymond? Do you have food? You got, you got clothes? Be content. That's, that's what the Bible says. You know? I know that's not a very popular message in North America. Is it? Because we have so much. We live like kings. The pharaohs in Egypt have been living in better than Old Nebuchadnezzar, those old kings. They would probably like to live where we live. Car we drive. You know? <laughs> oh, yes. We're so blessed. But because so many of us are blessed, we don't see it as, you know, right. such a great thing. Yeah. Because, well, everybody's got a car, just about everybody. Most people in the world don't have cars. You know that? Right. If, if you got a car, you're rich. Did you realize that? That's right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Most people, if they do good, they have a bike. Right. Or, you know, That's right. a moped in a lot of countries. Oh, we're so blessed. And then we drive around in our comfy air conditioned vehicles. Yeah. Suffering for Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> on our way to church, on our five minute drive to church. Verse 11, come ye children. Not only does he save us, contents us, but he enlightens us. Verse 11, come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Oh, how God enlightens his children. And he teaches us, and he guides us in all truth, and blesses us as we grow in grace in the Lord. And like I said this morning, it's so good to see those of you growing in God's grace. What God's doing in your testimonies uh, here lately. And it's encouraging. It's a blessing. Thank God for that. God is working our hearts. He's working our church. It's a blessing. Still, let's keep coming to Him. Okay. Come, you children. Hearken unto me. Keep hearkening to God, okay? Because God continually stretches us. 
or you know, growing us. He's not done yet. Okay, We've got further to go. I got further to go. You got further to go. Yes. Remain teachable. Very important. Never come to a place where you feel like, I think I got this. I think I know it all now. Never. And we do, if we do come, hearken. He will teach us the fear of the Lord. What man does he desire of life and love with many days and we seek good? I would say most people. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking vow. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Verse 15, he delivers us. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open. I'm sorry. He hear, uh, hears and cares for us. Verse 15. Delivers us in verse 17. Verse 15. He cares for us. I'm so glad God cares. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad God hurts when we hurt. Yes. He knows what we're going through. He became one of us. Remember that? Right. He knows what we go through. Jesus wept. God cried. Think about that. God can cry. God can hurt. Sense sorrow and can sense these things. He cares. Love that old hymn. Does Jesus care? I know he cares. Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. That's the kind of God we have. He's not some big fat Buddha idol thing. Right. But you know that isn't there and doesn't care. No, he's real. And he hears. And he cares. Verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. Cry out to him. Take it to the Lord. Sometimes you just got to keep casting on the Lord. One time's not enough. Cast your care on the Lord. Keep casting. Keep taking it to him. Giving it to him. So often our flesh wants to take it back and bear it. You know? You say, no, no. Take it back to the Lord again. Not going there. Not doing that. I know he cares. I'm going to give it to him. Verse 16. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. So. Yeah. Pity them. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth. And delivereth them out of all their trouble. Verse 17. God delivers. Number 5. From all their troubles. Thank God for his deliverance. Amen. God delivers his saints. He's able to empower us over this world. Give us strength. Give us grace. We'll look at that again in just a moment. God's grace in our life. He's faithful. That's part of his faithfulness. He delivers them out of all their troubles. There's hope. Amen. Even if you've really messed things up. Really, really bad. Sometimes people get to that point where like, I've made such a mess. Why continue on? Why go back to church? Or why continue even trying? Or, in a sense, this is a spiritual hospital, is it not? When you're sick, where do you go? When you're bad sick, you go to the hospital. You go to get help. You go to a doctor. Should we not come here? Should we not even be more motivated to come here if we're hurting? If our heart is hurting and we're going through these, these problems, God can deliver this hope. And then, uh, verse 18, the Lord restores. The Lord is nigh to them of a broken heart and say to such be of a contrite spirit. That's the key, isn't it? Come back to God. We've got to come back the right way. We're going to come back on his terms. Then we can truly get help, can't we? Yeah. If we want to do it our way, we won't get help. If we want to remain in our stubbornness and our rebellion, we won't get help. But if we come back the right way with a broken heart, a contrite, humble, submitted, then we can get help. Then God restored. How many times has God restored you? How many times has God forgiven you? Picked you back up. The good God. Amen. Amen. May we not take advantage of His love. No. God forbid. Amen. That we should send.
send the grace to them. But he is nigh to them with a broken heart, if we're real. And many of the afflictions of the righteous, verse 19, the Lord delivered him from them all. And then verse 20, he preserves. He keepeth all his bones, and not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. I'm so glad he's the keeper. Amen. With Lester Roloff used to sing a song. He's the keeper. He's the keeper. He's the keeper of my soul. Praise the Lord. He's the keeper. He's the keeper. He's the keeper of my soul. Praise the Lord. Would you sing it with me? He's the keeper, he's the keeper, he's the keeper of my soul, praise the Lord. He's the keeper, he's the keeper, he's the keeper of my soul, praise the Lord. Maybe we'll go home and sing that one this week. Maybe have a come to your mind, Joe. Notice in this passage of scripture we just went through. The simplicity and the sincerity of Brother David. It's really just all very simple, isn't it? Simple truths. But they make for a very happy life. See, the Christian life isn't complicated. God's not about complication. And sometimes we look around, we look at the universe, and we think, wow, it's pretty complicated. But it's like anything, if you understand it, if you break it down, it's actually not. Even Albert Einstein, he made the statement, hope the man got saved. You know, how many surprises who we see in heaven one day? Some people get saved on the deathbed, you know. I pray that some of these people do or have. Um, they're like Albert Einstein, but he made some interesting quotes. And, and one, uh, I think this was, well, I forget exactly when it was, but it may have been, I think it was after he had seen what uh, uh, someone had shown him the Hubble telescope and some different things, and he you know, was figuring out different equations and so forth about the universe. And, that, and he basically agreed that there has to be a God. He basically made that statement. And also, too, something else he said that I was thinking about. Uh, he said it's interesting how simple everything is, or the equations and how they all work out as far as the universe and all the forces of you know, gravitation and nuclear forces and so forth, and how really how simple it is, you know, once you understand it. I thought it was an incredible statement. And God is that way. God has made it that way for us. God's people. I mean, it, it's simple to be saved. It, yes. It's simple to walk with God. You know, sometimes we think people, maybe in the Old Testament or the apostles, and all oh, they were just super spiritual. I could never be like them, and I could never be close to God like that. Well, Satan's already got the victim in your life because you're already defeated right. before you can start. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they were men the same as us. You know, it's true. So we can have a close walk with God. Even today. Amen? Amen. And we can be happy. Yeah. But we need to be determined like Brother David. I will bless the Lord at all times. We must walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. The just shall live by his faith. Habakkuk says. Are we living by faith? Are we walking by faith? Are we walking too much by sight? Yeah. And if things are going well, then uh, then we're happy. Right. Does everything have to be going well? In order for you to be happy? Right. Then something's wrong. Right. right? We're not looking at it the right way. Right. We can be happy as God's people anytime, anywhere, no matter what. That's right. What goes on. I know that sounds fantastical, especially for a lost person, but it's true. Right. It's simple. The 
message today is keep it simple, keep it real. Keep it simple. Keep it real. What simplicity, what sincerity we find here in Psalm 34. No complicated truths, just plain and simple. It reminds me of what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Go through there. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Notice verse 12. Paul says, For our rejoicing, again, back to what David was saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Rejoicing. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience. Do you have a good conscience this morning? How's your conscience before God? That in, gives two things here, simplicity and godly sincerity. Not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God. We've had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you, word. So number one, in simplicity, not complex. We need to examine ourselves whether or not we have left the simplicity of the gospel. Because like I said, Satan wants to complicate things. Satan's so good at complicating things. I mean, just look at religion. I know. Yeah. How complicated is religion? Yeah. Look at all the Bible versions. Yes, right. How complicated is that? You know? It's all part of Satan's plan. So people can't find the truth. Right. Can't find God. Can't find true salvation. Even as the saved, we can allow Satan to complicate our lives. Sometimes we just need to get back to the basics, amen? Right. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, just over a few pages, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, Paul says, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. How could that be? We turn away from what we've been taught and how we've been shown you know, the truths of God's word. Uh, we, we complicate things. Yeah. We, we allow Satan to, to work in us. And, and number one goes right along with that, and it's in doctrine. Okay. Satan wants us to complicate doctrine. Right. So many people do. And that's why there's so many cults out there in Christianity. Right. We have more cults and more flavors than any other religion in the world. Right. You realize that? But really, the doctrines of the truths of God's word are really simple. Right. But Satan wants us to complicate it, especially when, if you're a new believer, because there's so much confusion out there. Yeah. Beware what you read or what you give your ear to. Yeah. You don't just read anything, you just don't listen to anybody. Make sure you check them out. What does their doctrinal statement say? You should be able to find a church's doctrinal statement or there should be something on their what they believe, how they believe. Right. Don't just listen to anybody or pick up any old book. It will have an influence on you. Make sure you're 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 giving yourself good food. Yes. Yeah. Not garbage. It tastes good. I don't want to try it. No, yeah. don't do that. Satan's stuff will taste good. Yeah. yeah. At least at yeah. first. Yeah. Like sin. Yeah. Sweet at first, bitter afterwards. Right. Bitter aftertaste. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Burns your stomach. Yeah. Right? That's sin. But it tastes good at first. Like a chocolate covered bitter thing. Yeah. You know? No, does their doctrinal statement, does it line up with the Bible? 
and all the cardinal doctrines of the Word of God that we hold dear, that we've held dear since the time of the apostles, does it line up? Are they using the right Bible? Are they using the old tried and true King James Bible, the gold standard? Are they using that? That's a good question. Do they believe in the virgin birth, the incarnate? Um, God, man, Christ who came to this earth, uh, the deity of Christ, do they believe in the blood atonement, do they believe in the resurrection of Christ, do they believe in the Trinity, uh, do they believe in Christ's return, do they, do they believe in repentance and the salvation and faith in Christ as we preached a couple weeks ago, do they believe these things? What are they holding to? Got to keep it simple. You know? I'd like to read to you uh, from the Second London Com Confession. Back in the day, they did not call it a statement of faith, they called it a confession of faith. This one dates back to 1677. And I love this, these old books. The Holy Scripture is the only sufficient, certain, and infallible rule of all saving knowledge, faith, and obedience. The books commonly called the Apocrypha not being of divine inspiration are no part of the canon or rule of Scripture. Concerning the Trinity. In this divine and infinite being, there are three subsistences. It's a good old English word. It means real beings. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Of one substance, power and eternity, each having the whole divine essence. You can't figure that out, so don't even forget to try. You just believe. You just trust God. He says, I'm one God. You say, yes, sir. Amen. I believe it. He says, I'm three persons. You say, okay, I, I believe it. <laughs> we have a question of God. He's, he's amazing. Okay? He's far above us. We can't figure him out. Concerning creation, to create or make the world and all things therein, whether visible or invisible, in the space of six days. Of the fall of man. And we in them whereby death came upon all, and all becoming dead in sin, and wholly defiled, and all the faculties and parts of soul and body. Speaking of Christ, the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, being very an eternal God, the brightness of the Father's glory of one substance and equal with Him. Of free will. God hath endued the will of man with the natural liberty and power of acting upon choice. It's neither force nor by any necessity of nature determined to do good or evil. Of justification. Christ by His obedience. And what I'm reading to you today is what the Baptists have believed ever since the time of the Apostles. We've never changed. I haven't changed. I haven't changed my doctrine. Since I came to Cornwall, I've not changed. Our website is still the same. Our doctrinal statement is still the same. And this is what we still hold to, to this day. Justification. Christ, by His obedience and death, did fully discharge the debt of all those that are justified. I love how they put it. Yeah. That good? Fully discharge the debt of all those that are justified, and did by the sacrifice of himself in the blood of his cross. Right. <laughs> the blood. Yeah, Praise God. Of adoption. Have put his name upon them, they received the spirit of adoption, have access to the throne of grace with boldness, are unable to cry, Abba Father, are pitied, protected, provided for, chastened by him as by a father, yet never cast off but sealed to the day of redemption. Amen. And inherit the promises as heirs of everlasting salvation. Once saved, always saved. Amen. Baptists have always held to that. It's a Bible doctrine. We're Bible believers. Of sanctification. Are also farther sanctified, really and personally, through the same virtue by His Word and Spirit dwelling in them. There's much more. I'm just reading a little sentences here and there. Of saving faith, the grace of faith, whereby the elect are enabled to believe to the saving of their souls is the work of the Spirit of Christ in their hearts. 
of repentance and the life and salvation. The saving repentance and evangelical grace. Whereby a person being by the Holy Spirit made sensible the manifold evils of his sin doth by faith in Christ humble himself for it with a godly sorrow, detestation of it, and self-abhorrence. That's that turning. I'm wrong. When you realize that, right? You pour yourself, you're convicted about your sin. That's when you turn. You're turning away from the world. Remember the example? And you're turning to Christ. And that's a choice, amen? Right. That we each make. Concerning good works, these good works done in obedience to God's commandments are the fruits and evidences of a true and likely faith. Their ability to do good works, and not at all of themselves, but wholly from the Spirit. Perseverance of the saints can neither totally nor finally fall from the state of grace, but shall certainly persevere therein to the end and be eternally saved. Of assurance, may in this life be certainly assured that they are in the state of grace. Concerning the law of God, be not under the law as a covenant of works to be thereby justified or condemned, yet it is of great use to them as well as to others, in that it is a rule of life. Good stuff. Awesome. Love it. Of the Sabbath day, or days of worship, which from the beginning of the world to the resurrection of Christ was the last day of the week, from the resurrection of Christ was changed to the first day of the week, which is called the Lord's Day, and is to be continued to the end of the world as the Christian Sabbath, the observation of the last of the week being abolished. <laughs> Good stuff, eh? Good stuff. Of singing in public worship. The whole church in their public assemblies, as well as private Christians, ought to sing God's praises according to the best light they have received. <laughs> Marriage. Marriage is to be between one man and one woman. Of the church consists of the whole and number of the elect, as well as they deal with the local church, but a particular church gathered and completely organized according to the mind of Christ consists of officers and members, bishops, elders, deacons. Ordinances, baptism. Immersion, right? Immersion, or dipping of a person in water is necessary to the due administration of this ordinance. They believed right. I spent like hundreds and hundreds of years ago. We haven't changed. You know? Oh, wonderful, wonderful stuff. The state of man uh, after death, the resurrection of the dead. Their souls having an immortal subsistence immediately returning to God who gave them. Uh, the souls of the righteous being that made perfect in holiness are received in paradise where they are with Christ. The souls of the wicked are cast into hell where they remain in torment under darkness reserved to the judgment of the great day. Talk before the, the judgment. And uh, in the eternal salvation of the elect of his justice and the eternal damnation of the reprobate. Don't complicate doctrine. There's no need to complicate it. Satan wants you to. He would like to see you complicated and get all mixed up. I think uh, Brother Michael was just saying, you know, this morning you were just gathering for prayer as the men there. So much is out there on, online today on the internet and YouTube and that, and you get mixed up, messed up so quickly. Okay. Stick with the truths of God's Word as they've been explained and taught to you and preached to you from this pulpit, from this church. Hold to them, okay? Don't waver. Don't give ear, okay, to those that would foul you up. Satan also will have you complicate your life when it comes to God's will. Not only doctrine, but God's will is, is simple. Satan wants you to pretend with God that he's completely in charge of your life. You live in some pretense. He 
wants you to play these little games with God. He wants you to give God choices. Yeah. You need to stop doing that. Don't give God choices. Don't say, God, I'm going to do this or that. You choose. Yeah. Don't, do, don't, don't play games with God. Satan wants you to play these little games with God. You need to stop doing that. That's childish. Or we make a decision and then ask God to bless it. Don't do that. Okay? Wouldn't it be just simpler just to say, God, whatever you want to do is fine with me? Yeah, yeah that's good, right? And then ask him, God, what do you want to happen? What is your will? What do you want me to do? And ask him to reveal it to you. So, oh, Pastor, that doesn't happen today. We're not living in those days. Maybe it happened with Gideon and his fleece, but not with me. No, God does reveal his will to us. Amen. He can do that. Yeah. Okay. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. God led the Apostle Paul. Where he, remember, I, we've looked at that, right? In his missionary journeys, he'd want to go here. God said, no, don't, don't go there. Go over here. You know? God still does that today for his children. Look to him. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Say so it can also have you complicate your life concerning relationships. Yeah. You say, but I like this person. We're old friends. Yeah, but does God like them? Does God approve of them? You say, but I like this family. Mm -hmm. I can. But does God like them? Does God approve of them in your life? See, but they're my family. Yeah. So we really care about our families. I know we do. And we love them. We want them to be saved. And we want them to be with us in heaven. But we have to be careful. Okay. Go to Mark chapter 3. Gospel of Mark. I'm going to hurry. Mark chapter 3, verse 31. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brother? Was that rude of Christ to say that? And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. I got news for you this morning. This is your family. Right. Amen. I care about your lost loved ones too. I care about my lost loved ones. But I'm telling you, this is your family. Yeah. Truly. Pastor, well, that's a hard saying, but that's, that's what God said. That's what Jesus said. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. You got a problem with it? You take up it. <laughs> For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother, and my sister, and my mother. The church is our family. We are of another world. We're like aliens or something. We think different. We are different. We're just, we're not of this world anymore. Where are you going to get that through your head? You know? Yeah. Go to John chapter 17. John's Gospel, chapter 17. <coughs> we, we can't be close to them. You know? Until they come to know Christ and become part of the family of God. Because we think so different. We are so different. John chapter 17, verse 13. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. In spite of verse 14, we can still have God's joy. I have given them thy word, the world hath hated them, and because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. But we can still have his joy fulfilled in ourselves. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world or take them to the Amazon and take them off the system. And yeah. No, he wants us to stay here. You know, and serve and live for him. Be a light. Be salt. 
verse uh, 16. Uh, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Be careful of relationships. Okay? Satan would complicate your life by relationships, by God's will in your life. By doctrine. Okay. Let's keep it simple. Right? God means for it to be that way. Now back to 2 Corinthians again, chapter 1, verse number 12. Paul also says, not only in simplicity, but in godly sincerity. And that has to do with being honest, being truthful, being real. Keep it simple, keep it real. Notice again, Paul kicks off this verse by speaking of the testimony of his conscience. How is your conscience? Are you being honest? Are you being real? In the Beatitudes, Christ said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You want to see God in your life? You want God to be real to you? You've got to be real with Him. And you need to be real with us, God's people. Don't play games. Don't play games with the preacher. Don't play games in church. Let's be honest with each other. Satan wants us to live a life of deception. Satan wants us to deceive the church. I'm okay. Everything's okay. You're okay. I'm okay. Everything's okay. He wants us to deceive our families. Live a lie before our families. And then he wants us to deceive our own selves. We can deceive ourselves. Just tell yourself, I'm okay. I got this. I'm okay. Don't follow your heart. It can deceive you. As Solomon said, guide thine heart in the way. Be careful, Christian. Okay? Let's keep honesty. We've talked about that on Wednesday night. Being truthful. Being real. Godly sincerity. So important. Simplicity and godly sincerity. Now notice back in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12, again, Paul says, not with fleshly wisdom. We're going to get ourselves in trouble. We think we can successfully live in simplicity and in godly sincerity in our own ability, in our own flesh. We can't do it. It must be, as the Apostle Paul says here, by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Notice how he ends that verse there, that way. Only by relying on God's strength, His power, can we have a good testimony of our conscience. Amen. It's the only way. Because I'm so weak and you're so weak. Or your flesh is weak. Spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, Paul says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Is God's grace he's bestowed upon us? Is it in vain? But I labored more abundantly than they all. He was determined. I will praise him. I will bless him at all times. Continually. Right? Like David. Paul's saying basically the same thing. I labored more abundantly than they all. I was determined. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. You put the right effort in. You do what you need to do. You need to submit to God. You yield to Him as you should. And God blesses that. Just like God blesses our faith. And we bless Him at all times. We praise Him at all times. Even though we're going through rough times and difficult times. God blesses that. We'll find Him helping us. We'll find His strength come our way. We must do our part, though. God will always do His part, but we must do our part. Sometimes we just want God to do it all. Yeah. God, just make me spiritual. Right. Pastor, Pastor, just pray for me. Just, just pray for me. Yeah. Well, I can pray for you, but uh, maybe a Bible study might be in order. Maybe we need to get together and uh, you know talk about this and some godly counsel maybe you know and no pastor pastor just pray for me just pray for me no you don't want help stop deceiving yourself okay Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 but we see Jesus 
who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man, even Christ. The line of the grace of God to taste death for every man. Remember, he was the God man. It's hard for us to wrap our mind around that one, isn't it? I mean, the Trinity is one thing, and then you got God in the flesh, too. I mean, that's. Whoa, that's, that's pretty deep. Start thinking about it. Yeah. But here we see in Hebrews, we rely on the grace. If Christ, God in the flesh, needed the grace of God, how much more do we? That's right. Why do you think you can live every day without the grace of God? You think you're okay? No. Are we being real? Are we truly being real? Real before God? Real before the church, our families, ourselves. It's only then that God can help us. He wants to. He will. His strength, His power is there for you. Okay? But only by relying on the grace of God can we steer clear of these complications that Satan brings and wants to bring into our life. These, these deceptions that he wants us to live. He wants us to deceive. He wants us to live in deceit. That's the way he is. Right? If he gets you living a lie, well then you're never going to reach your potential for God. You're never going to be happy in Jesus. You'll be flying, flying around. You're never going to grow. And then he's won the victory in your life. Be real. Amen. Keep it simple. Don't complicate it. Live in godly sincerity. Be real. We'll see God do great things. Do you want a life rejoicing, Christian? Yes. Paul said back in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12, For our rejoicing is this. David said, I will bless the Lord all the time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Number one, we must have a personal relationship with God. We must be growing in our personal relationship with the Lord. It must be very personal. It was personal to the Apostle Paul. It was personal to David, this relationship. We must be a part of a local church where we can see God working in each other. Okay? David said, I will bless the Lord. David was taking responsibility for himself. It was very personal. Are you taking responsibility for your Christian life? Number two, part of this local body. This is so important. Okay? Where we can see God working in each other's lives. In verse 14, if you're there, first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 14, he says, As also you have acknowledged us in part, and we are your rejoicing. We are your rejoicing, even as you are ours. Right? Notice that? We're connected. Right. Yeah. Right. Not only the whole body of Christ, all believers, but I mean the local body here. We're connected to each other. And when you hurt, we hurt. When a part is removed, yeah. that's like ripping off a limb. That's right. Yeah. How would you feel if I ripped your right arm off today? Yeah. You'd hurt. Yes. You'd have a loss. You'd have a loss of function for a while. You'd have to get used to living without it. Right? We, uh, we find rejoicing in a personal relationship with God, but also working together yes. and serving God together. Right. You know? It's a wonderful thing. God wants to bless us. Amen. And can bless the work here. Bless your, your life. And, but we've got to keep it simple. Right. And don't complicate it. We've got to keep serving God in sincerity. Godly sincerity. Keep it real. Don't let Satan discourage you. Don't let him distract you. Get you off. Um, it can happen to any one of us. Okay? Next. I don't know. Stay close to God. Okay? God's still working and God's still moving. God's still saving today. Can save, will save. So remain encouraging Him. 
be determined, like Brother David, I will bless the Lord in all times. No matter what. Because my God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Let's keep loving people. Right. Keep caring about the people. No matter how people treat us or what they do, we don't understand how they treat, why they do what they do to us. Or keep loving them anyway. What did Christ say on the cross? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Wow. That love of Christ is in you. Don't let the flesh get in the way. Yeah. Say no. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. That's putting down the flesh. Right. <laughs> Every morning, it rises back up, doesn't it? you got to yeah. stomp on it. Stop on it first thing in the morning. Just start singing to Jesus. Sing a song, something. The Lord is good. His mercy and white shape. The Lord do forever and ever. Are you ladies? What are you? Forever. All generations. So I will stand up. Amen. Put that flesh down. Say no, no. 